Less than 10% of people answer this logic problem correctly. The problem starts with four cards. Each card has a capital letter on one side and a single digit number on the other side. There's also a rule. If there is an A on one side of the card, then there must be a three on the other side of the card. The cards are laid out as shown. Your task is to decide which card or cards must be flipped over in order to discover whether the rule is true or false. You could just flip them all over now, but some cards might not need to be flipped in order to verify the rule. So the question is, which are the only ones you need to flip to verify the rule? Pause the video now to figure out the answer for yourself. Did you pick the A card? Most people do, and you would be correct. But this is only one of the two cards you would need to flip. You would also need to flip a second card. Did you also pick the three card? This is a common choice as well, which is a common mistake. It actually is unnecessary to flip the three card. Why? Well, it actually doesn't matter what's on the other side. You see, it can't break the rule no matter what is on the back. The rule was an A must have a three on the other side, not that a three must have an A on the other side. But don't worry, 80% of people make the same mistake of choosing only the A card or choosing the A and the three card. In one study, only 4% of people got the right answer which is super teeny, but still double the percentage of people that watch my videos and are subscribed to my channel. So if you enjoy my videos and want to see more of them, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to get to 1000 subscribers and I'll need your help to reach my goal. In exchange, I will keep this logic problem the same and change only what the cards represent. And magically, perhaps 80% of you will now get the correct answer. Now we'll have each card represent a patron at a bar drinking a beverage, either beer or coke. The other side is the person's age, and the rule is that if the person is drinking a beer, then they are 21 years or older. Now, like before, which are the only cards you need to flip over to verify that everyone is following the rule? Pause the video now if you need more time to figure out the answer. Did you guess the beer and the 16 year old? You are correct. So how are these problems the same? And why is one so much easier to figure out than the other? Well, both of these problems have the conditional statement if P then Q as the rule. The four cards are then P and not P, Q and not Q every possibility for both P and Q. In the drinking example, the beer was P and 21 years or older was Q. We needed to ID the P card, the person drinking beer, and we needed to check what the underage person was drinking, the not Q card. This is true for any if P then Q problem, as shown by this truth table a table that shows all input possibilities along with their corresponding truth value for the output if P then Q. For example, if P is true and Q is true, well, then the rule if P then Q is true. If P but not Q, then false, and so on. Asking which cards you need to flip over to verify the rule is equivalent to asking which of these inputs affect the outcome of the truth value. Using the truth table, we can see that as long as we have Q, our rule P then Q is true, regardless of P or not P. Likewise, as long as we have not P, our rule is true, regardless of the value of Q. The only cases that possibly matter is if we have a P or if we have a not Q. Therefore, those are the only cards we need to flip over. In other words, the answer to the first problem is you have to flip over the A card and the seven card. Well, now it makes sense why we all get this problem wrong. Who figures all that out on the fly? But then why was the second example with the beverages easy to figure out? 
Maybe because it just happened to be a more familiar scenario. Well, what if I said we could change people's answers without even changing the problem? We'll have the same if P then Q. This time, if an employee works a day on the weekend, then they will get a weekday off. The four cards again are P, not P, Q, and not Q. The difference this time is half of the people will be asked as if they are in the position of the employee, while the other half will be asked as if they are in the position of the employer. As an employee, they are told they are considering working on the weekend, but have heard that the company perhaps might not be holding up their end of the bargain, not actually giving people who work on the weekend the day off. With this perspective, most people choose to flip over the P card to verify people who work on the weekend do get the day off, and flip over the not Q card to verify people who did not get a day off also did not work the weekend day. In other words, the correct logical answer. However, as the employer, people are cued into the other perspective. They are told they are considering allowing their employees to have the day off but have heard that some employees might not be holding up their end of the bargain, that some employees might not be working the weekend day, but then taking the extra day off anyways. In this perspective, most people choose the exact opposite. They choose to flip over the cue card to verify people who do get the day off did in fact work the weekend day, and flip over the not P card to verify if people did not work the weekend day, they didn't get the day off. The exact opposite cards you need to flip over. With the exact same problem, our answers change based on who we think might be cheating. Our brains appear to be much more focused on catching those who might be cheating us than actually being logical. If pursuit of truth is the goal, Perhaps we should focus more on who we least suspect of cheating us, ourselves. Maybe then we'll mind our P's and Q's, and not Q's.